Hello everyone and welcome back to part two of the uh, crop keeper build. Um, in part one we created the tree armature and attached a base to it. Um, in this segment, part two, we're going to continue on building out our tree and we're also going to hopefully get to the point where we will start connecting some arms onto our jack-o-lantern. If you have not created your jack-o-lantern form, you need to be doing that. Hopefully you had the time uh, in between the first tutorial and this one to get that done. Um, you don't have to clay over the whole thing because we will be attaching some arms to this. So let's move forward with the second part of this tutorial. All right, you're gonna need a uh, good stack of newspapers for this. I have cut in half uh, some newspapers, so these are basically half sheets of newspaper. Um, you're gonna want some masking tape, and you're gonna want your hot glue gun fired up, and you're gonna need plenty of hot glue sticks for this uh, next session or section of the tutorial. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're gonna build up the bark um, area using our newspaper and it's a pretty simple way to do that um, you just take uh, you can make it you know as thick as you want or as thin as you want but I'm taking I'm gonna start out here with uh, I'll say three three sheets of newspaper crumbled up I just want to show you basically show you the idea of it before I start doing anything. So I'm crumbling it up like this. Crumbling it up like that. I'm going to move this forward a little. And the idea is we're going to cover these in masking tape first. They don't have to be completely covered in masking tape. And then we're going to hot glue them on. And you could do as many of these in different sections as you want, or as few as few of them as you want. And then after we complete that process, we're going to uh, insert up here in the top area, or you can do, again, as many as you want. We're going to insert um, some arms or some branches with some hands. Um, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to take my masking tape, and again, always wise to have some of your masking tape uh, pieces cut off and attached to your work surface or the edge of your work surface. And I'm just sort of candy caning, if you will. So, twisting. So it has a nice twist to it. And then I'm just taking my masking tape and doing like a candy caning sort of effect. Now, as you can see, I don't have the masking tape all around all of it. You don't really need to have it on all of it. It's basically just enough to kind of hold it together and in place so that we can glue it on um, to our our, our tree trunk base here. That looks pretty good. So I have that done and uh, I'm going to try to figure out like how exactly I want it. I think I'm going to put that one about right here. So I'm going to take a good amount of my hot glue be very careful. Again, I have my little cup of cold water just in case I get some on my finger. And I'm going to attach it to my tree. This is going to take you a little bit of time, obviously. You're going to have to hold it in place. What I suggest is turning, turning your tree on its side while you're holding it in place so that the glue starts setting up and drying. Um, obviously the glue is not going to be the only thing holding this in place because after we get all of these little uh, uh, branches if you will or you know we're just building out the tree trunk basically making it look a little bit more interesting 
Um, and by doing this technique, it will also allow us to not have to use so much clay and to clay in and bulk up these areas here. Um, so that's the other good part about this technique. Okay, so I have a few of them on there. You get the idea, right? So that's what you'll do. If you want, you can put thinner, thinner pieces of this in here, along in here. Um, so again, you can use as much as you want, put as many of these on here as, as you want. But if you are using your own constructed cardboard tube like we're using here, instead of one that's already preformed, you're always gonna have a seam. So what I suggest to help cover up that seam is to add, add some of that newspaper um, tube, you know, with the masking tape, glue one of those on the seam, um, and I would do one all the way up. So obviously this piece isn't going to reach all the way up there. Um, that's fine. I'm going to use, you know, tear off a smaller piece and uh, cover that area. So wherever you have a seam, um, definitely you're going to want to do that. And also, um, you can see where, you know, it's not completely round. So these areas I would glue, I'm going to go ahead and glue some of that uh, newspaper tube um, right along the edge of anywhere where, you know, it has these indentations, just, just to give it a little bit more of a rounder effect. All right, so as you can see, my seam, you, could, you can actually see my seam. I'm gonna need to uh, put some more hot glue in there and hold it down, but you get the idea. And I didn't have enough up here for my uh, newspaper tube, so I basically rolled a uh, smaller piece and then uh, I cut it and, and just glued it in place up here. So anyway, that's the idea. Um, I'm not gonna bore you with this and keep doing this on camera. I'm gonna go ahead off camera and I'm just gonna keep on putting in my uh, newspaper tubes here that I'm creating just to give this a little bit more interest to make it look more tree-like. All right, I have completed my uh, applying my uh, newspaper tubes that were covered in a little bit of masking tape and applied onto the trunk of my tree with some hot glue. So as you can see, all of that is done. Um, again, you can put as many of these things in as you want. You can make them thinner, you can make them thicker. Um, some of you are asking, hey, Joe, what if I made a huge one? If you make a huge one, what I suggest is not using this technique, but going out and getting some cans of spray foam, um, like Great Stuff Expanding Foam. It will, obviously, it expands. And you will just uh, apply that in the areas where you want to build up and create, uh, you know, your branches or your bark definitions using that. Um, because, obviously, if you have a huge tree trunk, uh, that's quite thick, quite tall. Uh, you're going to be spending a lot of time rolling up newspaper tubes and hot gluing them. So skip that with the big, big ones and um, use the expanding foam. Um, probably lots of tutorials on there on how to show you how to use the uh, expanding foam. Um, I'm not going to do that, obviously. Okay, next up, I'm going to show you how to create your uh, tree arms and hands as well as the arms and hands um, that you will attach to your jack-o'-lantern uh, uh, sculpture that you're, you will be using as well um, by using bendable wire. So I'm going to show you how to make this and the next steps. All right, this is a pretty simple technique. Um, obviously, you're going to want some bendable wire and wire cutters. And then you're also going to want uh, some masking tape. Uh, first things first, uh, what you want to do is determine how long you want your arms to be. Um, now keep in mind that we're going to be inserting them into our armature. And I would suggest inserting them at least two inches. Okay, so I'm going to be inserting this into my either my tree or my pumpkin form about there, about two inches. All right, obviously I've already created one, 
I'm gonna do one more and uh, I'm gonna use this uh, for my pumpkin form I think so you know do you want them the same length they don't have to be the same length so basically you're gonna need uh, three pieces of bendable wire so if I want these to be the same length I'm gonna go okay there's one so it's gonna come out to about here and I need twice that length so right about there I'd say again doesn't have to be perfect um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut set that aside taking my bendable wire and I'm bending it in half so that they're kind of even and then I'm twisting just like that if you don't have the hand strength use your uh, wire cutters or a pair of pliers to kind of help you bend especially around the end there you're gonna create basically you're creating the fingers right or the finger branches so you want to bend around that area I hope I hope this is uh, translating well it's hard to tell sometimes now this arm compared to this one yeah it's gonna be a little bit shorter but that's okay no big deal it'll lend it more character so I have that piece in place I've got it kind of bent I'm gonna take another piece of my bendable wire and I want it to be eh, this is gonna be the middle section so if you want three finger branches or if you want four then obviously you would do the same thing let's say let's do four just to show you so I've got you know I'm just eyeballing it but I have uh, I have that other length the other length is probably about the same size yeah not bad so I'm gonna do the same thing here but in addition to that I'm gonna loop this through I'm gonna loop that through and then kind of I hope you can see that I'm gonna loop that through kind of bring it over twist it around just like that on the bottom again this is the part that's going to be inserted into the armature this is your hand or your hand branches so you can take these and kind of bend them around each other bend them into the shape the direction of your fingers that you want this isn't obviously set in stone at this point so here you have or here I have two arm branches one has four little finger branches and one has three okay now this is where it gets a little bit tedious but it's a uh, paper mache and so a lot of things in paper mache can become very tedious um, we're going to have to uh, strip mache these things before we can apply any clay onto it because obviously paper mache clay will not ever adhere to anything metal or plastic. It will, however, adhere to uh, things such as masking tape, and it will adhere to newspaper. So the first thing that I wanna do, instead of uh, trying to get this all gooped up and stick on here with some newspaper, because um, it just won't work, guys. The, the uh, the newspaper strips directly on here will not stick okay with that type of paste um, so this is a necessary step a little bit of a tedious step but a necessary one where you're going to wrap your armature um, or your arm armatures um, in masking tape so that's going to be the next step. I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap all of this up in some masking tape. All right, here you have it. I have two tree branch hands. I'm going to use these guys for my uh, 
jack-o-lantern. I'm going to attach them again. They're going to go two inches inside. So I'm going to uh, cut out some holes where I want them to be and see how they look after I insert them. That's all that I'm going to do. I'll show you that in just a moment here. Um, but basically, this is going to be, you know, once we get the strip mache on here and then the clay, um, they're going to be thicker than what, you, what they appear now, obviously. They're going to be thicker. Um, we are going to not actually attach these to anything. Um, we're first, we're going to strip mache them, let them dry. So we're going to create these as separate elements of our sculpture. So we're going to strip mache them, let them dry, and then uh, prior to claying anything over, um, we'll make sure that they're inserted properly, make sure they look good on where we want them to be as far as inside our jack-o'-lantern, the positioning, and then once the strip mache is dry, obviously, we'll go over and we'll clay them over, and then at that point, we will insert them and then clay around those areas and, and the inside where we inserted and the outside so that they're going to stay nice and nice and strong. Now, my crop keeper, the original one, the, uh, the larger one, um, I actually used uh, tree branches, okay? Um, now, and, and it worked, right? I found some interesting tree branches and I use those instead of creating my, my own little hands. Um, problem though with that is that over time, the fingers or the, the, little, uh, the little branch parts that come off of the larger branch, um, stems I guess, I don't, know, I don't even know the word for it, but anyway, I think you understand what I'm saying. Um, they get, it got brittle, um, they started breaking off, and so I ended up redoing those by attaching um, bendable wire on top or over um, and creating them that way. So that was, a, that was a major, major flaw in using the actu an actual tree branch, some tree branches for that. Um, I think this is going to work great. Um, I've used this technique and many other different things that uh, you know I used hands for and arms for, and it works perfectly. But... Um, Let's go over and make sure that this is going to uh, look right. You know, I'm going to put the holes in my pumpkin, make sure it looks right. But when you are creating, um, when you are creating the arms or the branch arms for your tree trunk, they want to double these up, make them thicker. So, you know, you're going to use four pieces of the bendable wire that they're going to be much thicker, much more stable, much more sturdy. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just basically going to make more of these. I'm going to double them up and then I'm going to strip mache them. But first things first, let's check out how it might look, uh, these arms, how these arms might look on my jack-o'-lantern that I already have formed. All right, guys. So here is a look at uh, my crop keeper so far, my smaller version. Um, I have inserted the arms. Uh, basically what I did, I determined on where I wanted the arms to be. I cut a hole into those areas of my jack-o'-lantern. And I inserted them. Cool thing about bendable wire is that it's bendable. So you can, you can manipulate them, um, the fingers, the arms, and any type of position that you want. I'm going to take a step back here so you could uh, try to give you a view of the whole sculpture or the whole armature, what will be the whole sculpture. Um, so that's what it looks like right now. Um, I think off camera because you already get the gist of how to make these arms with the bendable wire. You just double it up or triple it up and you create the same thing for your for your tree trunk. Um, you know, put the arms wherever you want. Determine, you know, what's going to be the front of your tree, obviously. And uh, put a mark in there. You can man maneuver it, m manipulate it, uh, try different areas on your, uh, on your tree trunk. Um, but at that point, 
Do not attach them because we have more work to do. Do not attach them. Um, but once you are satisfied with uh, the position and then the thickness um, of your bendable wire, uh, go ahead and strip mache them. Strip mache them uh, with the newspaper strips soaked in your paper mache paste and let them dry. All right, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this uh, section, part two of our tutorial. Um, again, we got quite a bit of work done. Um, I'm going to, uh, like I said, I'm going to uh, not film it, but I'm going to create my branch hands um, to attach to my tree trunk. Um, I'm going to strip mache those with newspaper and uh, paste. Um, before you do that, uh, make sure you have them in the relative position, like your hands, your fingers, in the relative position of where you would like them to be. Um, now you could still manipulate, you know, the strip mache arms and, and, and hands or the fingers um, after that is dry, but it's best to, you know, kind of make sure that they're already in that position that you want, that uh, you know you're going to like when you start to clay those over. Do not attach them, but make sure that you do set the set your arms um, in front of a fan to dry. Um, it'll be you know they'll dry a lot faster if you stick them in front of a fan. Um, but I'm going to carry on with that, and then the next tutorial, part three, um, we're going to finish up our armatures, um, strip mache all of the other things over, attach our branches to it, uh, clay them over, and move on. So once again, I thank you for watching and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.